say this is like my favourite location ever now. I just I only come here for to celebrate good things. Um, I just want to give you a bit of a sense of um, I think where everything is up to now, um, and as well as the journey that we've gone on and, and where I think we can go to from here. Um, so I wanted to start out with the thank yous, um, and the thank yous are to everybody in this room. Um, and I was speaking to Jonathan Potts the other day, um, who can't be here today, but I, I saw him at something last night actually at the Bombay Surf Club, and he said, said, oh, Allegra, you were thanking us, but frankly, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really about you. It was about, no, it's you, and it's, he's absolutely right. It's actually about the values that this whole community has decided to stand up for, um, and it was me being the person, you know, who decided to stand for them and you guys standing for me. Mm -hmm. And so I think that is the best way of describing it because, you know, I was reflecting the other day on the journey to get to standing, and this was the hardest decision I've ever made in my entire life. Um, it's, uh, you know, I was telling a few people the other day that the first time Linda and I started talking about this back in June uh, last year, the, I got a call because of Jess Block, actually, um, who she is in the room. She said, oh, hello, Jess. Um, so Jess said, oh, my friend wants to talk to you um, about potentially standing for Wentworth. And I laughed. I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. But really, I was, thought that was absolutely hilarious. It's like, well, I have to meet it just because I'm so flattered. Um, but anyway, so Lyndall and I walked around Centennial Park and, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't stand. Um, but I think it's the same as so many people here um, were, were thinking is like, but I also can't stand by. And I think that's what so many people came to the conclusion is that there, there was, this was an election where, you know, hoping somebody else would do the work for you was not really an option. You had, we knew we actually had to do the work. And I knew that, um, you know, in those discussions that somebody had to stand. Um, and, you know, when Wentworth Independence said, no, look, we'd like you to stand, I felt ultimately I just couldn't say no. And I think so many of you also felt that you couldn't say no to doing something about this election. So well done to everybody in this room for standing for the values that are important to you and saying, you know what, I'm not just going to shout at the TV, I'm going to stand up, you know, put on blue t-shirts, which some of, it seems so strange to see people in, in non-blue t-shirts, <laughs> but it's nice to have a few in the room anyway. Um, but thank you for all for doing that and actually just standing up for your community and standing up for what's important to you, because that is, I think, the greatest legacy of this election. And I think if you reflect on the issues that we as a community identified as being most important to this community, things like climate change, things like integrity, um, you know, things like female representation in parliament and things about the values of this community. And then you look at what's actually happening in the parliament and what the government has committed to doing. And you say, you know what, we have actually stood, yeah, we're on the right side of history on these issues. Because while the Labor Party is not doing enough on climate change and it, doesn't ha it hasn't taken enough action, it is going to be under enormous pressure from the crossbench and from the, from the Greens in the Senate, but frankly from the whole community that has stood up in this election and said, this is an issue. And if you want to be elected in the future, if you want to continue to hold government, you need to act. And that is going to be the action of the crossbench and others to say, hold them to account, to do more, you know, to use that 43 as the absolute floor of their ambition and to say, how do we over deliver on that and deliver at least 50% by 2030? Because that's what this community has stood up for and that's what the country has stood up for in this election. And on integrity, which I know was the second most important issue you know, to the community when I spoke to them, we now have both sides of parliament who are saying that they're going to act on integrity, on an integrity commission. And that is a huge result. I didn't expect to be praising Peter Dutton in any speech I was giving. 
but he said that he's willing to do that. And I think the more that we can act in a bipartisan way, the more that we can you know, make particularly those issues uh, something that the whole community and the whole parliament stands for, the stronger that they will be. So that is a huge, huge gain from this election. So congratulations for everyone for standing up for this. And now let's come to Women in Parliament. This piece is exciting. So last time I looked, it was 38 or even might be higher now, might be 39% women in the lower house, which is incredible. And 57% in the Senate, which means that there will be more than 40% women in Australia's Parliament for the first time ever. It is a huge, huge achievement. It is, you know, as a, as you know, woman, as a mother of girls, I think that this is about us setting a parliament that we, that I hope is going to be just again, once again, the floor in terms of where we can get to, but actually completely resets the the need and and the the need for parliament to truly represent the community. And again, when you look at what the Liberal Party is saying that they've learned, even they have learned that this was the last election where they thought that they could ignore this as a problem. They absolutely need to act. And if or both sides of Parliament have to act, then long term we will get stable increases in female representation and also more diversity in the Parliament because that is the other huge win of this Parliament. We have 10 Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members of the Parliament and we have I think 13 or 14 non-European, non-Indigenous members of the Parliament. Again, most this is the most diverse Parliament Australia has ever put forward and I'm incredibly proud to be part of that. And so this is going to, from now on, it's really going to be a collaboration. And I, I, you know, I know some people have said to me, oh, look, you know, are you disappointed it's not a minority government? And, you know, on the one side, yeah, look, you know, I know that I would have more explicit power if it was a minority government. But let's look at what is actually, what the makeup of the parliament is and what that tells us about what, what needs to happen. And frankly, it is, it, the crossbench is a completely different um, factor in, in parliament now and going forward than they've ever had before. And I think you look for both Labour and for the Coalition, their path to power has to consider and go through the crossbench. And therefore how they think about working with the crossbench and working for the issues that the crossbench stand for and that communities like Wentworth stand for is, is absolutely crucial. And I think that is going to be, again, the great lesson of this parliament. And I see this already in terms of, you know, the welcome that I've had both from you know, different sides of um, the major parties, but also from the crossbench. You know, this is a crossbench that really wants to collaborate, that really wants to find the common ground. And I, th I think I've spoken to every single, I think now every single crossbencher on um, every single existing crossbencher and all of and almost all of the new crossbenchers as well, um, because this is a crossbench that wants to be constructive and hold both sides of parliament to account, but particularly hold the government to account on key issues, particularly climate change. So this is going to be a very, I think, effective and powerful crossbench, and it's a powerful force in Australian politics going forward as well. And a bit now just about the journey ahead for, for Wentworth, um, because, and you know, I'm, you guys are all here, and I've said this a couple of times, Unfortunately, your job isn't finished now. Like, you know, there wasn't that piece of like, great, you're elected, see you in three years' time, have a great time, <laughs> because that's certainly not um, what I would like from you. You know, I'm, I'm, there are three kind of key elements of, of, I think, how I see my job going forward. The first is one that we're really focused on right now, which is how to be a good local member for issues for local constituents. So we're already getting, you know, requests around, you know, visas that aren't working or, um, you know, uh, care, home care packages that aren't assessed properly. Those are the issues of local people and that if you're the local member, you absolutely have to manage those and be advocates. So the first priority is to get those systems right. You know, the second piece is to is to go into Parliament and, and really be that effective crossbencher in Parliament. 
And then the final and really crucial part is actually working with this community on what are the most important issues in this community, really using, I think, the 1,200 volunteers that we've gathered to say, how can we be a positive, constructive force for change for Wentworth? And how can that change that we create in Wentworth be an example for the rest of the country as well? And that is what I am going to be asking from you and this community. Um, these big issues are going to be around climate. It is going to be around youth mental health. It is going to be around education and public education. And absolutely, when it comes to the Uluru Statement um, from the heart and the adaptation of a, a voice to parliament through the, through the constitution, that are going to be crucial issues that this community is going to have to mobilise around. And I will be absolutely leading and calling on all of you to continue the work that you have built in this community. But it's incredible, but we've got more work to do. So thank you in advance. <laughs> And lastly, I just wanted to, to come back to um, really to the thank yous because, you know, I was saying, I, uh, I think now in this big room, I think I probably knew five people in this room, um, you know, 12 months ago. I did, like, you know, I can pick out the ones I did know, but there, there aren't many of you that I knew in this room. And I know from so many of you that this has been a chance to meet and build relationships with people that you never expected. Um, someone said, I didn't know I had so many of my people in the eastern suburbs. <laughs> but it is. It has been an, a huge privilege um, to be part of this community. And when I, you know, when I look forward to what happens next, it's very, um, it is intimidating to go and do this. It was very intimidating standing. And, and one of the reasons why it took me so long was to say, look, can I be that person um, that the community needs. Um, and I, my greatest reflection on that is, if I've got the community behind me, and if the community you know, is talking to me about what is most important, has my back and has, is not afraid to have the hard, honest conversation with me about you know, what I'm doing well and what, what I still need to stand for, then I will be the true representative of this community and then I will do this community proud. And so that's what I think going forward, is that I know there will be huge challenges ahead. I'm sure there'll be moments where you disagree with me vehemently, whatever, whatever I'm doing. But I also know that you have my back, and I have your back, and I'm here to represent you and truly represent the community of Wentworth. And I am so grateful to be here and, and so proud to be standing with you um, and alongside you for, for this community. So thank you so much. <laughs>